Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I thought it was about time I gave you a kitchen garden update. I am loving my kitchen garden. We've had an interesting time there. The weather has been extraordinary. We got off to a really, really dry spring. And then we've had a really wet summer so far. In fact, we're slightly waterlogged in here at the moment, but I wanted to give you an update and show you how we're getting on. There's been some ups and downs. Um, so some things have been thriving, others not, not so. But anyway, come on in and let me, um, let me talk you through it. This spinach has been doing so well. I've been up here picking, picking it. Now the bigger leaves I give to Billy. So these big outside ones I pick off for him. Billy's our tortoise for those that haven't met Billy before. And so Billy boy enjoys these big leaves. And then the baby leaves, we have been really, really enjoying. I love spinach eating it either cooked or just fresh like this. And there's nothing better than being able to come up here and pick our own. So this spinach has been doing really, really well. Beyond the spinach, we've got some kale down there, which has been doing really well too. It's been thriving, which is great. Now the broad beans have been erratic in fact i've got one here to pick but they haven't done so well to be honest that's quite a big one pop him in my basket we've suffered a little bit with black fly and all sorts of things actually lots of ants too i think some of the compost that we put down is quite hot the second delivery was really, really fresh, and I think that probably didn't help. The Edenami beans that I planted just beyond the broad beans, only a couple of those have survived, which is disappointing. But again, it's trial and error. This is our first, first season of growing. And so, you know, there are ups and downs with everything in life, aren't there? I'm really thrilled with this bay here. So I've got my broccolis in here. I've got purple sprouting and just normal broccoli. These are hazel that we've just bent over. We used them for the arch here. Reuben made the arch and put these into the ground in between the scaffold boards. And then this is just netting. Broccoli gets really badly affected by all sorts. And so it's really important to net it. And actually in hindsight, it probably would have been a good idea to have netted um, a few other things as well. The net is attached to these bits of wood that we had left over from some fencing and it just weights the netting down but then it means I can lift up to get in to either pick or weed and this is coming on really well. I'm super excited about this. I love cooking with broccoli and there's nothing better than a bit of homegrown. Now this doesn't look like much going on in here, but it's leeks. A couple of different variety of leeks and some of them down here haven't done so well. They have died and I did plant a lot more, but these are the ones that are thriving and doing well. So that is pretty, pretty exciting. And at least we've got some coming up and actually I probably would have been sick of the sight of leeks if they'd all, all succeeded. I've never grown potatoes before, but these seem to be really thriving. They're doing really well. I've got some additional compost to put in if needs be. So um, I can add that in, but I'm really, really rather excited about this potato situation going on here. And then here I have got carrots and then a couple of rhubarbs down there. Try not to tread on anything. In here I have got some rocket, which again is great for salad, it has slightly been affected with little things enjoying it, but that doesn't matter. Again, I will net that in the future. The sweet corn's been rather disappointing. I seem to only have these two and one there, and I planted a lot more, but hey ho, at least some is growing. And I've got my climbing beans which actually seem to be coming on quite nicely, climbing up the poles. 
that one's not that nice. could do with a little bit of help but those are doing well and my sweet peas now i need to pick them and also tie them up i've got some garden twine these ones i'm not sure why have not done well these ones again need tying up i've had a busy few days i don't know the chickens clucking around i've had a busy few days and got behind on that so that's a job i'm going to do now garden twine and regular scissors i don't cut twine with my um, secateurs it damages them oh there's a huge worm just crawling along down there and i'm just going to snip off those sorts of lengths and this is really something you need to do once a week last week i was frantic and so it's mr week and it is important to try and keep on top of these things but it doesn't matter better late than never is um, often what i find myself saying and it is really important with your sweet peas to pick them regularly. Look at that lovely, lovely long stem. So the more you pick them, the more they will flower. If you don't pick them, they will go to um, pea seed pods. So um, it is really important to get up um, on a regular basis. And come and pick them and the smell is honestly it's just heavenly it makes me want to dance and sing and oh it's just beautiful I wish you could smell those anyway enough waffle I must get going <laughs> These sweet peas in my hand are the ones that I've just picked in the kitchen garden. These ones are the ones that I picked by the orchard gateway. They're perennial sweet peas and I just love the fact that you don't have to do anything with them. They just come back year after year. The colour is so vibrant. They don't smell amazing but they just look really pretty and completely and utterly effortless. ready to be picked and turned into red currant jelly. So let's get picking. And if like magic the sun has just come out, I have got lots of red currants in here and a few strawberries too. Hopefully there's enough to make some red currant jelly, lots of spinach and my sweet peas. I can't wait to go and put these in a vase inside. I get so excited every time I come up here to see the progress and see what's happening. Of course there are some little disappointments too. In hindsight, I would have put another layer of cardboard down. There are a few weeds that are sneaking through, so I'm keeping my beady eye on those and pulling them out the second I see them rear their ugly heads.
I'm going to weigh out my red currants and see how many we've got. I love using these old fashioned scales. It's really great as well for the children too. Get some counting and doing a bit of maths. So I'm guessing that's too heavy. So I've got eight on there. That's two, three. So that's 11 ounces. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty good harvest. I'm quite pleased with that. I could get some more from um, the fruit and veg shop down the road, but actually I'm carless at the moment, so I'm gonna have to make do with this lot, which hopefully if I'm lucky might make a jar or two. Red currant jelly is one of the easiest things to make. You don't take the stalks off, you just leave them exactly like they are, just a good rinse and then into the pan. I am going to just cover this with a little bit of water When it started to boil, put a lid on, cover it, and you'll stop it evaporating too much, and then leave it to simmer. Mine's going into the bottom of the arca. For about 20 minutes. If you don't have an arga, just leave it on a really low heat, just to simmer gently. So I can't actually believe it. You know I said I didn't have enough red currants, really and I didn't have my car. Well, pretty much just after I said that, I got a phone call to say my car was ready. So I've just been to the greengrocers and got some lovely, lovely vine tomatoes, some broad beans, so I can do a broad bean and feta salad. Love that, love these flat peaches and loads more red currants. So I'm going to cover those in water, let Bring them to the bowl, let them simmer for 20 minutes, and then I've got extra red currants to make into red currant jelly. I've also got to myself a little treat. These are chocolate honeycomb. Oh, one of my favourites. So um, I'm going to get cracking. Simmer now. Oh, and um, pen is barking. Pen, it's okay. You don't need to bark. It's a bean bean, it's just arrived. Right, jam strainers. These are my absolute favourite. I think I've got certainly two, maybe three of them. Penny, stop grumbling. Really quick, really easy. And I love this make actually because you can get replacement muslins for them. I need to have rum rummage in the cupboard because I've put the muslins in a separate bag, I think. So that then sits on the glass bowl. And then you just put your muslin over the top of the frame, like so. And then my red currants that have been simmering in here. I'm actually going to give them a little bit, actually I can just use the back of the spoon, a little bit of a bash with my jam ladle. And then very carefully, and don't get splashed. And then leave that overnight to drip down and keep all the liquid that is in the bottom. Just leave it to do its thing and then tomorrow we'll turn it into jelly. 
red currant has been straining overnight. I have got my jam jars prepped and my preserving pan at the ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put these to one side. I am going to take that off and throw that away. It's done its job. Measuring jug and measure how much you have got in there. And then you can work out the amount of sugar you need. So that says 1200 mil, just fractionally more than 1200 mil. So let's work out the sugar now. So I'm just weighing out my sugar here. So the best way to do it is if you have 500 ml of your red currant juices, the concentrate, use 500 grams of granulated sugar and that in pounds and ounces is one pound two ounces. So I had 1200, so that is um, two pounds, four ounces and then and then I've just added an extra two ounces on there and that's how I've worked it out so if you were doing it in grams it would actually be um, just over one kilo basically is how you do it it doesn't need to be exact now granulated sugar I find is best to use with red currant red currant's got a lot of natural pectin so you don't need to use the fruit jams and you can use caster sugar but it can burn because it's finer and it also can make it cloudy. So I want all of that sugar to dissolve. So I'm gonna put it on a low heat on the agar. Don't put it on a high heat because the sugar will burn. So while it's on a low heat, just stir it and make sure that all of that sugar has dissolved before you increase the temperature and that way it shouldn't burn. So just keep stirring it until it's all dissolved. Now, these jam jars have been through the dishwasher, but I'm also going to put them into the agar. I knew you were going to use the baking oven because I think the roasting oven is too hot and that will sterilise them further. So while my sugar starts dissolving, I always put my jam jars in at the ready. Now, while that is dissolving, I'm going to get everything ready, clear the decks and get organised because red currant doesn't take long to reach setting point, so you need to be um, super organised and ready for it to happen. So this is my essential jam ladle and this funnel, really, really helpful. I'm going to grab a couple of tea towels as well because the jam jars will be hot. But if you fill them up when they're hot, you don't need to put a wax seal put the lid straight on it will form a seal and then you get that lovely popping sound when you open up the jam jar and I forgot to tell you to put a couple of plates in the freezer uh, just more plates and then you can do your set test and get some spoons at the ready too get a really good boil going and just stir it occasionally don't over stir it because again that can make it cloudy and then with your red currant, you probably want to do a set test after three or four minutes of a rapid boil and then see and work out how long you think it needs. And this has been boiling rapidly for about five minutes. I'm going to do a set test and I literally just carefully put a little spoonful onto a plate that's been in the freezer and I'm going to put it back in the freezer for about 30 seconds and then see whether it's ready or whether it needs to boil for a little bit longer. I've just taken the plate out of the freezer and when I run my finger through it, 
it is not congealed and it is not jelly like so i'm going to give this another five minutes of boiling and then we'll do another test i can see that the consistency is changing so i'm going to do another set test now and just see how we're getting on so i've done one over the other side of the plate so i know which is which and that's alexa telling me it's had another five minutes so i'm going to put this in the freezer and then we'll see now to test to see if it's ready you want to put your finger through and if it wrinkles or forms on your finger like that you know it's ready red currant jelly doesn't wrinkle as much as something like marmalade does so i think this is ready so i'm going to start jarring it up just look at that the color is just amazing i'm just going to let it settle for a moment and then that scum i'm just going to scoop out i've got my jam jars at the ready with my jam funnel and my jam ladle and we are all set so literally just scoop out and there that is pretty good now be careful because that is hot i have asbestos hands so it's okay and then just quickly fill up your jars don't overfill them you don't want it overflowing you'll end up in a really sticky mess just till you can see it at the top of your jam funnel when you're filling up your jam jars work quite quickly because you want to be putting the lid on while they're still hot so don't get distracted by something And then get your lids on like this. That's why I have a tea towel at the ready and screw the lid on really tightly. And then that's how you get that lovely pop sound. So there we are, my homemade red currant jelly. Picked, well, most of it picked from the garden here, some of it from the green grocers, but it's just so exciting to grow something and then make it into something delicious that you want to eat. And I hope that you have enjoyed this week's video, my kitchen garden update and tour of how everything is getting on and how to make your own red currant jelly thank you so much for watching please remember to give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it ring the bell to be notified of my weekly videos leave me a comment it really helps other people be aware of the video the more likes and the more comments it gets so please do engage with it mean the world to me thank you very very much wishing you a gorgeous weekend lots of love and i will see you again very soon